Hi everyone, it's Anne. Today I'm going to be making a video that's a little bit different than the previous videos that I've made in the past. I've always answered your questions and, and tried to get as detailed information in the answers um, as best as I can. But uh, many of you have been asking me more about my situation and what I went through being a runner and my husband being the chaser. So today what I'm going to be doing is um, bringing my husband in into this video and having him explain in his own words so that you can understand a little bit um, what he went through and also what I went through. I want you all to meet my husband and my twin flame, Wano. Hi everyone. Now, the story between us, um, we met on the internet. Um, it was back in the winter of 2001 um, we actually met by accident. It wasn't like I went looking for him and he went looking for me. Um, we started with um, video chatting and the story was very interesting because um, when back then they didn't really have too many video chat and um, you know like they do now Skype and all these modern technologies. So it was it was a it was like a little video called um, I visit and we were both infatuated with it. Now I started um, going on this because I was talking to my sister and my cousins that were like across the mile then, and, and I found this one particular like chat room what they called it back then video chat room mm -hmm. and I saw a lot of little boxes basically. So what I did was I found this one particular person um, that was like got my attention. Now I didn't really look for someone that I wanted to get involved with but he kind of looked like Tom Cruise to me and I've always had this mm. like crush over Tom Cruise since I was like 12 years old <laughs> risky business um, and what I did was I just okay let me just chat and and it was like like I think about three o'clock in the morning or two o'clock in the morning and you know as you know for France it's what it was early early morning for so me it was like six hours difference where because I'm in Cleveland he's in it was in Paris so um, I just began chatting with him, and that's, that's how my story began. And, you can um, read and he'll explain to you in his words. Well, actually, I was, uh, I was working on, on different countries in Europe and, and U.S. Uh, before, before I started talk with, uh, with my wife. I didn't know at the time. And uh, so I was using this uh, new uh, uh, software called iVisit. Uh, you can actually video chat with, uh, with your customer and your clients. That was the fir first group that was doing that. And uh, on this day, this morning, so I had to go early to the office and, and it's like something just, uh, like I heard, not heard voice, but something just pushed me like a to, message. like a message that pushed me to go, because I used to never go at this time uh, trying to go with customers, it was later on with a, with a difference of hours mm -hmm. between France and other countries. And so something pushed me very strong to go on, on just looking. I don't know what to look, I don't know who to look for, I just knew that something was pushing me to look until I saw a little, a little picture right there. My little and box. <laughs> a little box, yeah. And, uh, and it was like instantly uh, like, a, like, a, like a lightning hitting me and, and my heart was beeping and I don't know for no reason. And I'm, I'm shy. I, I'm kind of shy. I, I won't talk to strangers if I don't know them or, or you know. So I, and I typed her. I say, hello, how are you? And my English was a little broken at the time. Uh, so it was kind of, for me, hard to get back into the English, you know, if you don't practice, you lose it. So I just started to talk to her and she did reply to me, which I was surprised to. It's like something was telling her to reply to me too. So, so that, that's how I started on that. Okay, well, um, after that, what happened was, is that I, um, I felt a little uncomfortable because I, I don't go into these, these chat rooms. So, you know, I just said, okay, it was like two or three in the morning. I'm not sure. Anyway. So I ended the conversation and I did not give him any of my contact information because I don't give my information, my personal information to, to guys, no matter if they look like Tom Cruise or not. <laughs> so, um, I just said, okay, two ships passing in the night. And I guess, you know, if we'll be, we'll be, you know, I, I, said you know I'm in you know here and he's over there and I don't think that that would ever ever two different cultures and I you know I never I never did anything like that before um, so going on like for maybe about two months I would say mm -hmm. like two months two months yeah um, I thought about him and I and I kept feeling him but though you know being a runner um, basically I blocked myself from any kind of like love I, I basically devoted myself to my two kids and you know just my my life and you know just making myself happy because that that at that time I was like like going through a lot of different things so that was part of my my journey so 
I kept seeing this like little um, flicker come up on the bottom of my screen. It was called um, MSN Messenger. Okay, that's what I had. And I was like, what is that? Because I just got this computer. And I'm like seeing somebody saying, hello, hello, hello. And I'm like, this has been going on for mm -hmm. like a while. I don't know, maybe about, about, a, about a month you kept like... Over, over a month. Over a it month. was MSN Messenger. Mm -hmm. And then I said, okay, let me click onto it. But I'm thinking, is it a hacker or is it a virus? So I clicked onto it. And lo and behold, it was it was him. He was telling me, they remember me. It's Juano. And I'm like typing back. And I'm like, okay, yes, I do remember. And I'm like, what is this? This is not right. And, you know, I got scared. So I immediately deleted the program because I got so scared. Then, you know, little by little, I, I thought to myself, maybe maybe this was something. And, and I just like, like, I felt so hurt inside. So I went looking back for him and I couldn't find him. He wasn't back in that chat room. And then he finally, he... he finally found me through an email address and and he emailed me and then I reinstalled my software and we went right back to chatting now his situation is a little bit different how he went looking for me since I didn't give him my contact or information about me so what, what did you go through after that night well altogether it took like around two months to hear back from her and uh, yeah but how did you find me how did you how did you actually locate my information and everything what did you do well every day i was looking for her so i went back to, and i visit every day without having nothing to do and i visit so even even the weekend i used to go to the office and uh, and try to look for every day uh, i was able to go back to the historic of i visit if i find her ip address and i was able to trace her ip address to her current email ad email address and i was able to email her and, and contact her so my username Revealed all of this information yes. to you. Yes, I had to look. I had to look uh, very deeply inside. Yeah. Well, he is an IT guy also, so yeah, was... <laughs> that's another thing. So he works on computers, um, and then and then that's when um, you know something just clicked in me that okay, we did, we need to communicate, and it, it's something good to explore. And even though you know he was like super handsome, as you can see, as like okay, I'm going to talk to him, but I don't really believe that this is something that could work in the future. So um, I went on like that every day. We would talk. We would be chatting. Um, I really couldn't talk with him and understand him because his English was extremely broken. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I did not speak no French, and I didn't know anything about cultures or anything like that. So we went on um, several months this way, and, and I felt very drawn towards him. He always hinted around about marriage, about commitment, and you know what? I told him right from the very beginning. I said, I don't want to hear about that. Let's just take it day by day, and let's just forget about what's going to happen you know, later on, but I just want to go day by day. Let's just go slow. So he wanted to come and visit me, and that's when like, I said, well, you know what? I'll never know until I, until I meet him. So, And that was in 2001. Mm -hmm. And September, um, not sure exactly what date it was in September. I know it was before the 11th, which everybody knows what happened um, on September 11th. So our plans got postponed. And after that, it seemed to be a little bit awkward for both of us because of everything that happened. And um, I was scared. I got scared again. I felt like maybe this is a sign or something I should just take a step back from. So I really like didn't communicate as much with him as, as I did before. He kept like trying to get in touch with me and trying to talk to me. Um, we didn't break up, but we just like, um, we, we just didn't talk as much. We just didn't communicate as much. Things were going on with us and it was a very difficult um, two months. He basically tried to communicate with mm -hmm. me um, on many different occasions and um, it just, I just got too scared. So after that, um, something clicked in me. I missed him again and we started again talking back in the, it started in uh, like the fall late fall and so then we um, rescheduled our plans for um, January after the holidays so. and it, it basically it felt like it was a little bit better to travel for him to travel you know after everything that's been going on with 9-11 um, um, so when he came in town came in the US um, I knew right away he was like a keeper I mean I felt I felt this enormous amount of love I said wow is this guy really like here for me I was like really excited but at the same time I was terrified to death because I said what am I doing this guy is just like wow it's like I was intimidated but though I was you know overwhelmed with love so what I did was I just took it really slow and originally he was only meant to stay here for um, his plane was only I mean his trip was only meant to be here for um, 
was it one week? It was one week, yeah. One, one week. week, okay. And then, you know, it started to, let's, let's push it back to like maybe two weeks. And then we went every week. It was going on a week and a week and a week. Sometimes it was bad weather, bad snow. So we had to push another week later. Right. So, so we just kept doing that. So we went on like that for um, the whole three months. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about, you know, like getting back together, you know, again, like him coming back in the summer, you know, staying a little bit longer. Um, you know, I was still like, kind of like I was happy about it, but I was scared to death. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what to do. You know, I wasn't expecting a, a like a, like a, such a deep, deep, deep attachment with somebody. So then he proposed to me. And then after that, I felt, I don't know if I can do this. And I told him, I have to think about this. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this can happen. So then we went on, you know, being with each other and then came the three month mark, which is the visa waiver that he has to go back, which was today. April 10th, um, 2002. And, you know, it was that morning that I woke up. I I don't know what happened to me, but I, it was like, I just got like an awakening. I knew. I said, I can't let this man go. I'm not going to let him go. <laughs> so what I did was um, immediately I told him, let's go to City Hall and let's go get the marriage license and let's just go find a justice of peace and just get married because you're coming back. You know, it was like, it was like right there. I knew I'm not letting this man go. There's nothing that's going to make me let this man go. So then, you know, oddly as it is, we went down there. He has no, you know, U.S. citizenship, no green card, no nothing, no nothing. visa or anything. And, you know, they, they instantly issued him, you know, and us, me, him and I, uh, a marriage certificate. So we we have to find now justice of a peace. Mm -hmm. He's leaving like around three 3 p.m. Plus, yeah. you know, there's like a three-hour security prior to that because they didn't have like what they do today. So we went all over looking. There's just a piece. Oh, they're out to lunch. Oh, there is nobody. And there's no churches open on a, like, was it a Monday or a Tuesday? It was a business day. Yeah, of course. And we went all over. And then something just happened. And, you know, there was a church. I saw a little church door open, you know, like right down the street from me. And I said, let's try it. So we went over there and we talked to the, the minister. And he was not even like in his clothes or anything. He was just like, you know, like cleaning or something. And he said, you know what? Normally I would not do anything like this, but I feel something is telling me that I need to marry you too. So he married us. And right then and there, I hopped in the car and took him to the airport. And uh, he was in, you know, he was going home back to Paris. Then two weeks later, um, he came back and we've been together ever since. So that was our story, how, that was how it happened story. since. And, and every moment feels as if it was the first moment. You know, I, I think I always ask him, maybe it's 14 years. Really? It doesn't feel like it. It's like you have to go through a lot in order to find your, your true happiness with your twin. Now, I went through a lot prior to my um, meeting him. So sometimes you have to go through a lot of negativity before you actually do or, you know, present it with your, with your twin. And he did too. So we both had to go through our own challenges and 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 um, journey together, finding ourselves. Just but that, yeah. when you do meet your twin, you have to remember everybody goes through their own um, trials and and tests, and and you have to figure it out. Sometimes it's a life lesson. But the one thing you have to do remember is that when they meet up in a lifetime, they will be together. It does happen. It will happen. It's just you have to go through these lessons on your own, and we have to learn the hard way. So every day is not perfect, but every day we try to make every day like it is our last day together. So we try to make every day count, in other words. Now we're going to be leaving. We're going out to dinner to celebrate our 14-year anniversary. Um, did you have fun? It was a lot of fun. Oh, this is great. So in the future, I will be bringing my husband again in future videos. Um, and... If you have any questions, I'm going to be posting another video very shortly um, about um, Soulmates and Twin Flames. So if there's a question that you have um, that you would like me to include on my video, please feel free to email me or uh, post them in the co uh, comments um, portion below and I will add them to my video. Um, so until next time, um, love and light to you all. God bless. God bless you. Take care. And see you soon. Bye-bye.